It was lunchtime, and the Raggy Dolls were making their way back to the factory. Except for Sadsack. He'd fallen asleep under a bush by the pond. He was dreaming of food. Jellies, cheeseburgers, chips. He was just imagining a boiled egg when he woke up. He could hear a strange crackling sound. It seemed to be coming from a clump of reeds by the pond. Sadsack listened hard. The crackling turned into a rustling. And then there was a kind of cheeping. Whatever can it be? He crawled towards the clump of reeds and peered in. And there, to his great surprise, he saw what looked like a saucepan made of grass and twigs with six empty eggshells inside. What a curious way of cooking eggs, thought Sadsack. The noise was just behind him now. Sadsack spun round and saw a strange creature with a snapping beak. Sadsack ran away immediately. But everywhere he went, the creature followed him. Help! Help! Fortunately for Sadsack, the Raggy Dolls had noticed he was missing. They had just decided to come and look for him. There he is! cried Dotty. What's he doing? I think he's being chased by something. Sadsack saw the Raggy Dolls and came puffing towards them. Help! wheezed Sadsack. I'm being chased by a monster. <laughs> that's no monster. That's a duckling, stupid, said Dotty. Oh, isn't it sweet, smiled Princess. It thinks you're its m m mother. Oh, no, moaned Sadsack. But secretly, he felt rather pleased. It's quite fun being a mother, he thought. We ought to find its real mother as soon as possible, declared Dotty. Everyone agreed, but they didn't have to look far. Across the pond, they saw the mother duck and her five other ducklings. As soon as it heard them, Sadsack's duckling ran as fast as it could back to its real mother. Thank goodness for that, said Dotty. Sadsack was disappointed. But at that moment, they all heard another noise. Hello, what is this? cried Claude. Quick, everybody, hide in the bushes. It's a car, whispered Dotty. I wonder why it stopped thought Lucy. The looks like p p picnickers, said High Five. The Raggy Dolls watched as a family of five marched into the field, carrying all sorts of bits and pieces. The woman had taken out a tablecloth and had spread it on the ground, while the man sat down and opened a can of beer. The three children began mucking about. The girl practised handstands.
where Big Brother tested the volume on his portable stereo. The little boy rode his brand new BMX bike. Pedaling hard, he pulled back on the handlebars and lifted his front wheel high into the air. The dolls watched in amazement as he rode it round and round on one wheel. He was so excited, he didn't look where he was going. Look what you've done! screamed the woman. Get off that bike at once! The bike had run straight across the picnic cloth and smashed all the crockery. Oh, Mum, it was an accident, whined the boy. Boys will be boys, said his father, taking another swig of beer. Don't sit there drinking. Clear up this mess. And you, turn off that radio. Everybody did as they were told. The father scooped up all the broken china in the tablecloth and took it over to the duck pond. <laughs> The ducks were terrified as pieces of broken china fell all about them. But the man didn't seem to care and went back to the picnic. The big boy switched on his radio again and the music blared out louder than ever while the family ate and ate and ate. Pretty soon, food wrappers, chicken bones, paper bags and empty bottles were scattered about everywhere. Sacre bleu! This is an outrage, muttered Claude. First I ruined the duck pond, and now they ruin our field. It's disgraceful, thought Dotty. That radio is so loud I can hardly hear myself think. I've got a horrible feeling we'll have to clear that mess up after them, thought Sad Sack. Suddenly there was a flash of lightning and a clap of thunder. Oh well. That's the end of that, said the father. I'm not staying here if it's going to rain. But I'm still eating, whined the little boy. Well, you can finish it in the car. The raggy dolls watched as the family drove off. I knew it, said Sansa. They've left all their litter behind. I'm worried about the ducks said Princess. That horrid man has thrown all that broken china into their pond. We'd better make sure they're all right, said Dotty. G -g good thinking, said Hi-Fi. The raggy dolls made their way to the duck pond, which wasn't a pleasant sight. <coughs> Not all the broken china had fallen into the water. Jagged pieces were sticking up out of the mud along the bank. The ducks were trapped. Don't panic, called back to front. We'll soon help you out. Please save my babies first. No problem, said back to front. The dolls formed a line, and one by one, the ducklings were lifted out and passed along to safety. Thank you so much for saving us, quacked the mother duck. Ah, don't mention it, said Claude grandly. We are too pleased only to help. Sadsack had looked around and found a litter bin. The dolls started work on picking up the litter. At least it stopped raining, thought Sadsack. The mother duck and her ducklings helped tidy the field. Gradually the mountain of litter disappeared. As they cleared the last of the rubbish into the bin, the raggy dolls had the biggest surprise ever. There was the boy's BMX bike. Uh-oh, thought Hi-Fi. This means they will be back. And sure enough, there was the car again at the gate. You'd leave your head behind if it wasn't screwed on, complained the man. I've got an idea. Grab the bin and follow me. The raggy dolls emptied all the rubbish into the boot. Then they covered the rubbish up with the tablecloth so that when the boy and his father returned with the bike, they wouldn't notice. Dotty's idea had worked out splendidly. Although they didn't know it, this time the litter bugs had gone home, taking their litter with them.
That duckling thinks you're its mother again. I don't mind, smiled Sad Sack. It's not much of a life when you're just a pretty face. Just to be whoever you are is no disgrace. Look around and you will find people of every kind. Like the raggy dog, raggy dog, raggy dog, dogs like you and me. Raggy dog, raggy dog, raggy dog, made him perfectly. So if you're not at ease with your knobbly knees and your fingers are all thumbs, stand on your two left feet and join a raggy dog chance. Cause raggy dogs, raggy dogs, are happy just to be. Raggy dogs. 